Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to talk about HTML4 versus XHTML versus HTML5 and why three different standards and what's the big difference between the three. As you know, all of my YouTubes can be found at students.jccc.edu and then Lisa L. Fry. That takes you to my homepage. If you click the Web 110 HTML5 CSS link on the left, it'll take you right down to my HTML and CSS YouTubes. And this particular YouTube is found at the very bottom in the other section. HTML4 versus XHTML versus HTML5, what's the difference? And I'm going to click this page link, which is going to take me to a table of the major differences between these versions of HTML. But in general, I want you to know that Hypertext Markup Language has been around a long time. Version 4 was announced in 1997 and is still sometimes what you'll find today. XHTML was announced in 2004, and it was an effort to make the language much more strict and much more precise because in the beginning, only people were reading the web page. So as long as the web page looked okay in the browser, that's all we really worried about. Who cared if it was sloppy code behind the scenes? As long as it looked good to the reader, it was considered correct. As you know, the internet took on many more tasks than we ever imagined it was going to in the very beginning. So the XHTML strategy had a lot of rules. Well, they kind of went overboard, and in HTML5, some of those requirements were relaxed. So HTML5, which was announced in 2014, was an effort to make the language strict enough so that both people and machines and other programs can read it, but not so strict as to impede development and productivity. The browsers are very good at reading sloppy HTML, but of course we want it to be as validated and as semantic and as professional as possible, both for humans and for the machines and for the Internet of Things that are reading the code behind the scenes that never existed back in the 1990s. And also, I want to let you know that basically the whole XHTML strategy was abandoned with the announcement of HTML5. So you really don't hear much about XHTML anymore. It was actually version one and kind of died right there. But when you look at the backside of a web page, you'll immediately know if you're an HTML4, XHTML, or HTML5 document based on the doc type. Right now we're working with this nice, neat little doc type with HTML5. I love it because when I started working with web pages, we were working with doc types that looked like this. And the only way you can really tell between an HTML4 and an XHTML doc type is right here toward the end. It says HTML4 or it'll say XHTML. And if that were not bad enough, there were three different doc types for both HTML4 and XHTML, depending upon if you were working with a strict standard, uh, transitional standard, or we're working with frames. And so these big ugly doc types indicate that you're working with an old page of HTML. The next rule, upper lowercase. In HTML4, uppercase tags were A-OK. -okay. In fact, you commonly saw tags that looked like this in the HTML. And I even saw many textbooks that had HTML tags written in uppercase just because it made the tags stick out a little bit better. In XHTML, lowercase was required. Now, in HTML5, lowercase is recommended. And if you don't use lowercase with all your tags, you're just not going to look professional. But it's not required in HTML5. In HTML4, closing tags or well-formed tags were not required. In XHTML, they were required. And now, again, in HTML5, your page will be rendered by the browser OK if you don't include that closing tag, but it's still highly recommended. Attribute values. In HTML4, we did not need to use quotation marks around our attribute value. XHTML, quotation marks are required. Now, of course, the quotation marks are highly recommended. In HTML4, the break tag or horizontal rule tag without being terminated was A-OK. -okay. In XHTML, the closing slash on empty elements was required. And now we're back to not requiring that final slash. And usually I see empty elements not terminated in HTML5, although sometimes I still like to do that. Put in that final slash just to indicate that you're intentionally closing that empty element. In HTML4, attribute minimization. What that means is when you have an attribute such as checked in the checkbox, you did not need to state the attribute value. In XHTML, they made you explicitly state the attribute value. Now, back to HTML5, that requirement's been relaxed a little bit. You can either use the default value or you can explicitly declare the default value that you want for an attribute. In HTML4, 
when we inserted JavaScript, we had to use the type attribute and specify that we were using JavaScript. In XHTML, it got even uglier because the JavaScript had to be surrounded by the C data, character data, and then we inserted our script. HTML5 has cleaned that all up a lot, and now because JavaScript is the default scripting type, we don't even need to include the type attribute. We do not need to worry about the C data. We just insert our JavaScript. But the big deal in HTML5 and why everyone got so excited about HTML5 isn't even because of relaxation of some of the rules, even though most of the XHTML rules are still recommended. The big improvement with HTML5 was the addition of all these new elements, new structural elements that defined and clarified what content we were working with in the web page. We call these our semantic tags. We know that semantic means it has meaning. So something in the main section certainly is much more meaningful than a div. Same with header, footer, nav, obviously a wonderfully semantic tag. There are also many new content tags, including video and audio. A lot was done with multimedia content in HTML5, and the browsers are still working toward embracing those standards consistently across the different browsers. On our forms, there were several new input types, and this really helps with our mobile devices. So many different input types on forms were added with HTML5. There are a few tags that were deprecated or removed with HTML5, and mostly they deal with styling. The font tag being the big one, and then big and center are also no-nos under HTML5. And APIs. There were many new APIs, application programming interface standards, added with HTML5 to allow that web page to connect to many other technologies and devices as the Internet of Things grows and explodes. If you want to read the specifics about these differences at the top of this web page, the differences between HTML4 from the w3.org I've also got a link to HTML5 differences from HTML4, according to the official keeper of the standards, w3.org. But in a nutshell, this table lists some of the primary things that we want to be aware of and know about. Thank you.